Hello everyone. We welcome you all to this week Tech Tuesday webinar on CDQ Exception Management Use Case. Today's speakers are Akshada Sable, who's a Solutions Architect, and Sachin Jain, who's a Principal Solutions Architect from CSA team. Before we start the session, let's go through some of the housekeeping tips. The webinar is for one hour that includes 15 minutes Q&A. You can post your queries in Q&A box, which will be answered at the end of the presentation. All participants will be muted during the presentation. The session will be recorded and it will be available on our Infra Support YouTube channel and Success Portal where you'll be able to download the slide deck. Please feel free to submit your suggestion or feedback for this session in the post webinar survey. The Success Portal is a micro learning platform that offers free unlimited learning to all the registered users. This feature rich platform helps you learn and adopt to Informatica products better. The following are a few important links that you can go over later. This will help you in your product adoption journey with Informatica. Over to you, Akshada and Sachin. Thank you. Thanks, Akshada. Thanks for the brief introduction. And welcome all for today's webinar session that is Cloud Data Quality, which is Exception Management Use Case, actually. With that, uh, let's get started. This is the agenda, a sample agenda, it's overview of exception management and a license switch required for that, how to enable that, and then a sample use case which we, we were going to showcase that, and then <clears throat> what steps needs to be followed to achieve this exception management. We will be providing a demo for that, and then finally we'll go for a question and answers. Okay, so what is exception management, right? So when a user calls an exception a record, actually, right? And how does this use cases come into picture, right? So the business users is looking at like, you know, no, I would need, give me those exception records so that I need to validate and verify it actually, right? If it is like no real issues or not, correct? So uh, how to achieve this, right? Um, if you have to go for uh, writing a logic in our, you know, uh, using our CDI stuff, say a series of logic has to be written to get these records into a specific format, right? So uh, uh, some of the steps needs to be followed, but with the help of our exception management, it's a simple exception task needs to be created on top of it actually, uh, uh, so that exception records will be generated for an Excel and you can download and then you can share it with any people actually. Right, so uh, usually when do we call it as an exception record, right? An exception record that contains some sort of data quality issues, which is defined in the, the logic actually, right? How do we define that logic here in our CDQ? We do have a rule specification. Uh, uh, it's a kind of um, a sample logic will be written into that actually, right? And we define what is that logic and based on that we, we call it out what is exception, what are all invalid records in that actually, right? On top of it, uh, a rule specification, again, it's a rule, right? So that will be applied on top of the profile and we are going to create an exception task from there. And once it is successfully run and you will get the a data to, to be downloaded actually, right? That's what the exception data, you will get it in an, in an Excel file actually, okay? So, <clears throat> it's all about on exception management uh, heads up, I would say, okay? So usually, as I mentioned, the sample use case, we are going to uh, showcase as a demo to you guys, okay? So let's get started and uh, 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 what are the license bits are required, right? So if you are on IDMC platform, right? So, um, these are all the additions which are required that is on IDMC that's a CDQ editions and then data governance edition is also required because we are going to create exception data stored in our uh, in our platform itself right where data governance is right so uh, it's a hawk platform at the back end so that's the reason data governance edition is also required okay so uh, and and moreover the license bits are um, data sets, which is exception tasks, okay? And uh, DQF the exception management connector, which which needs to be enabled. Where do you enable this one actually? At the runtime also, right? Um, in, in the agent, under uh, uh, the connectors, data quality exception connector needs to be enabled, okay? 
So these are all the license bits and editions, which are a kind of prerequisites, I would say, uh, to enable the exception management in our IDMC platform. Okay. Uh, then a sample use case, actually, right? So <clears throat> ability to identi identify and view a data that does not meet a data quality criteria, right? So that's where, uh, as I mentioned, a business user is looking at, I would need some sort of exception records, which is not meeting my requirements, that we will call it as a quality issues, right? <clears throat> Can you give me that report immediately, right? That's what usually the requirement comes into picture, right? Say if I for DQST world, right? So who who is working on to generate those reports or exception records? That is what the business is looking for, right? He will put a logic and a rule, and uh, you know based on the business uh, requirements, right? So he will put a rule logic and then he will make, which is not matching with that logic, he will call it call it out as a invalid records, right? That is what we call it as an exception record for us, right? <clears throat> so uh, in our demo, so we are going to showcase this, this uh, uh, you know, example or the scenario, right? So customer uh, tier information based on some of the status information on doll based on that, we are going to calculate what is, what is invalid, um, uh, you know, exception records for uh, during the demo itself, right? And finally, the business can verify by just by downloading that report itself, right? So that's how the use case which we are going to uh, solve in our demo today, okay? And similarly, right, <clears throat> if we have to consider some of the other uh, use cases kind of thing, right? So suppose if you have a kind of uh, deduplication consolidated operation, right, for uh, kind of data sets which you have identified to resolve some sort of duplicate records, right? So, uh, uh, which is like, you know, where do we consider those duplicate records by just putting some sort of uh, thresholds, right? So in the, during the logic itself, we do put some sort of threshold. If, if the threshold doesn't match, uh, match with that, right? So then, then we call it as like, you know, if it is greater than that threshold, then it's considered as a uh, normal record. And otherwise, if it is less than that, it's considered as a duplicate record based on some of the logic, right? So um, if you have categorized these things, right? So uh, in, the, in the logic itself, and finally in the rule specification, right? So that's a rule that you are going to create, right? Um, you can add an exception saying that, you know, uh, the records, which are below the threshold value, which we have provided, who can go as an exception uh, indicators to that record actually, right? So, so those things can be taken out uh, uh, and downloaded and then uh, exposed to the users who are looking at it actually, right? In, in, in a similar fashion, so you can go for anything, you can check for the null values also, which is present, and then you can take it as an exception record for that, right? So, um, those are all the, the use cases which, which like, you know, uh, we can solve it, okay? Now, we have CDQ, we have, like, you know, everything in our ID, IDMC platform and the license weight and everything, right? So we have a use case to solve it now, okay? What steps to be followed, right? So uh, in, in CDQ, if you have um, a resource which is already selected and then you know that some sort of logic needs to be applied on this course, right? So you have to create a rule specification with exception logic in it actually, okay? So once you create a logic and then status, uh, which shows as an invalid there, we have exposed as an, uh, uh, you know, exception logic needs to be created, which is critical, medium, poor kind of thing, right? So once the rule is created for an exception, with the exception logic, right? This needs to be added, this rule needs to be added to the profiling task actually, okay? The source which is already identified and then you have run the profile and then you can add this rule to the uh, profile now, okay? So once the rule is added to the profile task, okay? There after enabling this license, right? So uh, in the drop down itself, you will, you will be getting a exception task for that actually, okay? You can create an exception task for that. For the in the profile task, okay. 
So you need to provide the rules uh, which you have added for the exception logic and then you will create an exception task for that, okay? Once you created the ex exception task, you know, configure it and then uh, run this exception task, okay? So once the run is successful, then you will be able to, uh, 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 you know, download the exception data, okay? Uh, that's the simple uh, steps needs to be followed, okay? So let's go a little bit in deep on, like, you know, one by one on the steps actually, okay? Great rule specification, right? So this is what the rule specification, okay? Uh, at the back end, you could see um, the rule logic and also we have written here, right? So, and, uh, and this is very much important, the rule action it says, right? So status value, okay? And this is kind of mandatory, okay? So now you will be targeting it as for like, you know, invalid records, right? So once you click on edit option, so you, a pop-up will come up to define the exception actually, right? The priority of it actually and the description for that, okay? So uh, this is where in the rule, during the creation of the uh, rules pack itself, um, you know, we have to uh, provide, we have to define the exception logic also, okay? This would be your first step, okay? As a simple example, what is that rules pack is all about, suppose, if a if a logic would be like this, right? So if 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 a input is not considering with the tier values, right? Which could be a, a silver, gold, demand, or platinum kind of thing. That is how we are going to segregate the custom tier information, right? Um, if it is not matching with that, rest of the things consider and based on the other column information, say status, right? whether it is active, which is not active, which is live kind of thing at all, right? Based on that information, you can consider the customer is a kind of invalid, right? Based on this logic, we are considering those records as exception records, right? That's how the logic, uh, you know, the rule would be and the logic would be, okay? So once you create this rule, okay? The next step would be on adding this rule to the profile task, okay? So uh, uh, these are all the, the rules which we are focusing now, right? So if you could look at the last rule which has output values for the exception, okay? So rest of the things are not, uh, you know, exception rules, but the last one is the exception rule. You could, you could figure it out by looking at the exception output actually, right? So, this is the next step, adding a rule to a profiling task, right? So once this is done, okay, once we added the rule to the to the profile task, at the uh, three dots which is showcasing here at the action menu so that you can, there's a drop down for, it enables to create exception task for you. Once the license bit is available, then this option will uh, showcase to the user, create exception task, okay? So uh, user can create exception task on top of the profile task once the rule has been added actually, okay? So once the, uh, uh, you know, uh, create exception task is uh, created by the user, then it needs to be um, uh, added with the rule. This is how once it is configured with the rule, uh, with exception logic, what we have added, right? So. Uh, and you could, you know, schedule it, right? And um, once this is ready, run the exception task. Again, this is an exception task, run this exception task, right? That's how the user needs to be, uh, needs to run this exception task to get the uh, exception records as an output, okay? So now, what will happen when we, when a user chooses to run it actually, right? So during the runtime itself, Okay, a connection uh, will be created uh, at our IDMC platform. Okay, a target connection. That's where we do store exception uh, uh, records actually. Okay, so it is an auto-generated one actually and during the runtime it creates uh, based on the secure agent where we are running it actually. Okay, that's the one thing. And user do not need to create any target connection because these things will be automatically created uh, during the runtime itself. Okay, 
So I'll show you one of the example how the target connections will be created to store the exception tasks actually. Okay. Um, and again, um, this will be this exception data will be exposed to the users once it is completed, right? So this is how it will be. You can, I mean, once the complete successful run of the uh, uh, exception task, okay, uh, user can able to download the exception data, okay, and there is another option to delete the exception data also. So if you don't need, um, uh, you know. Uh, to store those data into into our uh, uh, data store right so probably you can delete that option okay uh, uh, and even more like you know um, once we store this data in our uh, uh, the connections what we created right so uh, at the db level right so and again uh, after uh, 30 or 45 days again um, we are going to auto delete those things also right so this is where like you know a user can download this exception data and then they can send it across to the user who is looking at the business users who is looking at it actually right so and see once you download this right so this is how it looks like actually see this is actually a source data all right and exception metadata columns are also there actually, right uh, what is the exception message and then priority of it actually, right? What is the rule name it got executed on the specific columns, right? So uh, all the information and even uh, some more like, you know, job ID, everything will be given, um, uh, uh, you know, metadata, exception metadata columns, right? Those things will be added to the um, exception output data, okay? Uh, user so that user can verify on which rule, uh, uh, you know, this uh, row, is executed and this is the reason for that actually, right? So this is how the sample uh, data which looks like. You can download it and then send it across to the user who is looking for the exception records, right? See at the back end, right? So uh, uh, as I mentioned, so how exception task again, it's a kind of rule. So what does it do actually, right? So mm, based on the source and again, uh, the exception logic the rules gets uh, acted on the source level and uh, whichever is the records which are not uh, matching with the logic, right? So the, those logic, I mean, those records will be sent to the exception store, right? That is a target actually, right? So that's what, it's an auto-created target connection, okay, during the uh, during the runtime of when you, when you run the exception task, okay? You don't need to create any target connection uh, to store this one actually. Okay, this will be auto created and there is no user defined or, you know, a target creation will not be given actually, okay. And uh, the target connection name will be like this, like, you know, DQ exception and score, uh, you know, kind of agent ID. That's what which I mentioned for the specific agent ID uh, number, it, it start creating for that actually, okay. And this is how the sample, um, connection DQ, uh, you know, exception uh, store connections are created. Okay, so DQ exception and it's um, runtime environment ID actually, right? So this is how it, it gets created and this will not be given access to the users actually, okay? User has to download the Excel file which have been given at the, once the successful run of the uh, exception task, right? So this DB will not be given access to the users, okay? Um, yeah, these are all the things. And now, what are all supported systems actually, right? In ecosystems now, we have different ports like, you know, AWS, Azure, GCP and all, right? So currently we are supporting, uh, uh, exception management is supported on uh, AWS ports, okay? Uh, okay, this is the one thing which to be notified actually, right? So uh, AWS, Ports where we support this exception management. Okay, and these are, these ports are available almost all in all the region. Okay, uh, not on Azure and then GCP, right? So, um, and the other thing is like you know on the runtime uh, agents, secure agent, non-elastic serverless are supported, not on the elastic runtime actually. Okay, so make sure that when you are running an exception uh, task, make sure that secure agent and uh, uh, which should not be an elastic one, actually. Okay. 
um, some of the references uh, which will be given in the deck itself so that you can download uh, this deck also and then uh, you can get access to those references also. Okay, so I have given um, documents for like, you know, uh, exception management, quality, profiling stuff, uh, rule specification, uh, and then finally on what is that IDMC platform is all about, right? So um, you can click on this links, you can get the information about how to create this rule specification, profiling, uh, you know, exception management, end-to-end -end details are available in the, even in the doc docs also, okay? So yeah, next would be the demo. I'll be handing it over to Akshada to showcase end-to-end -end the creation of exception, rule specification, profiling task, and then how to download the exception report also. Okay, and then get it over to Akshada. Thank you. Thank you, Sachin, for explaining the use case for exception management within CDQ. Now, let us look into the demo of exception management. So, as Sachin has explained earlier, the prerequisite for exception management involves two license bits along with the CDQ or IDMC edition. Now, first, let's look into the license bit. So, to review the license in your organization, you will have to log in to the administrator panel or administrator service of the IICS and click on the license bit over here. Okay, so click on the license bit to review if you have the DQ license. So ne you need two different licenses. One is DQ assets with the exception task asset in it. And the another one is DQ exception management connector. So as you can see over here, you have a connector with the name DQ exception management, right? which is a trial license at the moment. And the custom license is DQ asset exception task. So these two license bits are very important to get started with the exception management. Now second important configuration is at the secure agent level. So open the secure agent for or the runtime environment using which you are planning to execute the exception task. Second important configuration is enabling the connector for the secure agent. So just click on the drop down on, of the secure agent group, click on enable or disable services, go to the connectors section and you will see connector with the name data quality exception management. So we will just search it, yeah, data quality exceptions. So by default, this is disabled. Make sure that you enable this particular connector in the secure agent group. Let us see if this changes. So these two are the important configurations. And once you have these set, we are all good to go ahead and configure the exception management. Now let us deep dive into the exception configuration. An exception is a record that contains unresolved data quality issues. So we can make use of rule specification within CDQ to identify the exception records within your data set. So let us see how to create a rule specification. So rule specification can be created with the help of data quality IICS service. So we will have to right click on the data quality service and let's say open link in the new tab or you can open in the same wizard itself. So let's go to the data quality. This is the data quality service of IICS. So as you can see, it has listed all the asset types on the screen. We are interested in creating a rule specification. So let's click on new and say rule specification. So this is going to open up a wizard where you can configure your own logic of rule specification. So let's just give some name, rule specification, customer attire. And you will have to choose one of the data quality dimension. So in this case, I'm going to check if the customer tire is uh, valid or not. So I'm just going to give validity as the data quality dimension. In the configuration vi window, you will have to specify the ID actual logic that you want to identify or you want to specify for identifying the exceptions within your input data, right? So let's just add one input. I'm going to make it string of 50. And this is the place where you can have multiple conditions within which you can define the rule logic. Let us have a sim simple logic to check if the given input is null or not. So I'm just going to add this. And if it is a null value, then I want to mark the 
exception that value as exception and if it is not null value it's a valid value so one thing with the exception management is make sure that action that you choose should be status value so if you choose any other action that is a normal rule specification but if you want a rule specification to be added along with the exception make sure that uh, status value is chosen and then based on your logic it could either be a valid value or invalid value so in this case if it is not null it's a valid otherwise the status value is invalid okay now along with the valid and invalid status values you get to define the exception type so what type of exception this is right so to do that click on the pencil icon next to the invalid value so take a note that this pencil icon is present only with respect to the invalid value configuration because valid values are no exceptions so there is no need to have a configuration over there okay so you have invalid values click on the pencil icon and you will see a tick arrow or check box which is going to allow you to add the exception details so just click on this box and it will pop up two more wizards one is the exception priority wherein based on the exception type you can define the priority whether it's a major exception or if it is critical or if it is a minor as exception so let's define this as a major and value entered is empty the moment i save this this is going to create uh, if i go to the test window yeah let me just save it first i can see three different outputs getting generated the first one is going to tell you what's the output of the input value that is given based on the condition second one is the exception priority and third one is the exception description so in this way based on your business requirement you can create different different uh, rule specifications with different logics so in simple words in the exception management process you create an exception task from the profiling task which applies a rule specification to the data so you have a profile which is built on top of source data attach the exception rule or rule specification with the exception logic and then generate the exception task from this so now we have done the first step which is nothing but developing a rule specification logic now let us go ahead and create the profile so to create or generate the profile we will have to go to the profiling service of the iics so just click on the data profiling now i have a customer csv file here which has all the customer information stored within 19 different columns the file stores personal information about the customer like customer name first name company address city country etc and also stores the business information like customer id customer status and the uh, customer tier so the end goal is to find out the exceptions within the data with respect to the customer status and customer tier so there are few garbage values in the input or in the source file that have been entered in the system and that needs a verification and we need to flag the exceptions so now user knows the valid values of the status are active inactive e but anything other than these values needs to be reviewed so there could be any genuine data entry mistake or there could be an actual exception and that is why user will create a rule on top of this profile so as you can see there are 19 different columns so we have different types of rules associated with the profile so first two rules are just checking if the uh, particular string is null or not but if you see the other two rules right these are the exception rules so why uh, if you see the difference between first two and third and fourth rule the first two rules have only one output which is primary rule set which makes it different from the third and fourth rule right so if the output contains only primary rule set you can consider this as a normal rule specification which cannot be added to the exception management right so we saw it earlier that if a rule needs to be added to the exception management you will have to choose the status field in the output of the rule specification and since we have cho chosen the status field to valid and invalid we do see the additional output fields added over here okay now i'll just quickly show the rule logic that i'm using over here in the configuration if you go you can see that i have taken one particular input and i'm checking if the i'm checking if the status is active or in non active sorry if it is active or live or non live so i am aware that these three are the valid values of the customer status but if i am getting any other input than this i, I want to flag that particular value as invalid and that is the logic that's being used over here 
so in the logic configuration you can also make use of the dictionaries right so i have given one attached one example of the dictionaries wherein i have some 5 to 6 values of customer tire as valid values and anything apart from that is a invalid value so what i have done is i have taken input over here and so just uh, click on the user input and say is within function and over here when you go you have dictionaries right so you can choose from list of available dictionaries that you have and in that way you can have your own logic created i'm just going to create this one so there are different different ways of defining your own logic but one thing remains common which is nothing but make sure that the status values are chosen to make sure that the rule specification is being used in the exception management now let us go back to the profile now we have a profile created we do have the exception logic rule specifications added now let us create the exception task over here so to create exception task click on the three dots which are on the top right of the profile and you will see an option create exception task so click on this exception task we just had some changes yeah so give a particular name to the exception task so i'm just going to name it as TT final exception task. In case if necessary, specify the description. Now it will list all the rules which have which are eligible to be added to the exception task. Now it is up to the user if they if he or she wants to add all the rules to the same exception task or if they want to create multiple exception tasks using multiple rules, right? So in this case, I am interested only into the customer tier and customer tier and customer status check. So I am going to check only these two exception tasks. and click on next so it will give you the details about where the location to which location the exception task will be created please note make a note of this exception so the moment you click on create it is going to create a data quality asset of type exception task into the location that is mentioned in the summary screen so now once the process is complete we will go to the data quality asset and review the exception task so as you can see the exception task has been created successfully and by default the user who creates the exception task will have full permissions on the asset but if you want any business user or any other user than the create creator of the asset to view it you will have to explicitly add the permissions to the exception task so let us go and review this exception task so i had given the location as a specific project so we'll go inside the project and try to search for the exception task so as you can see on the screen we do have the exception task with the name exception tt final task generated so now we have the exception task ready the user can go ahead and execute the exception task using a specific secure agent so in nutshell what we have done is we created a profile using the source from which you have to identify the exception data we added a rule specification with the exception logic and we created an exception task from it now once the exception task is created whenever necessary the user can come and execute the exception task to view the exceptions within the source data now let us execute the exception task so it will take a while based on number of exceptions that you have and the moment exception task starts executing you will see the status of the job into the my jobs tab of the data quality wizard so you can see the task is in progress now so we, it will take some time so i'm going to show you the earlier task which was executed so once the exception task completes its execution you will see a summary of the execution over here you will see the status obviously if it is successful or failed to execute you will see the number of rows it has processed and you will also have an option to download the exception data right so Uh, let us just download so this is going to download the data in the csv format and you can share it with your business users to review if at all there is any exception and once the review is complete you can very well go ahead and delete the exception data now let us have a look at the exception data that we have downloaded so this is the csv file which got which got downloaded from the cdq panel of the iics so as you can see the blue highlighted 
columns are the actual source columns the one highlighted in yellow are the exception messages and the rule names from which the exceptions have been generated and on the right corner you can see the uh, job or and the creation date of the exceptions right so you can very well filter these exceptions based on the rules so let us say I want to see the exception data only for incorrect status of the customer I can very well filter it within the CSV so in this way you can share the CSV with your business users or with the respective stakeholders who can review the exceptions and then take a decision based on that in nutshell the exception task writes the exception records that it identifies with the given logic it writes it to the exception data store and the business user can download the records that the task identifies as the exception and you can also retrieve the session logs you can download the exception you can analyze or resolve the data quality issues that records contain in separate data process so your organization if you do not need the exception records anymore you can very well delete these records right so one important point to remember is to download the exception records or to delete the exception data the user must have a role with the exception data or view and uh, view the exception data right so that is the privilege that user should have to delete the uh, delete or view the exception data right so make sure that you have read and execute permission on the asset before you download the asset so that's all I had from the demo perspective. I think if there are any questions, we can take up the questions now. Thank you. Hi all, we have reached the Q&A part. Please post your questions. Yes, so I do see a question uh, in the chat which asks about is it possible to use the exception management feature with the on-prem Informatica analyst and developer, right? So I just want to clarify the demo that we gave now is specific to the cloud exception management or exception management within CDQ. For on-prem Informatica data quality, there is a separate exception management uh, feature that is available. So that is a complete different feature altogether. I hope that answers your question. Then we have another question uh, which asks about the exception data. Like where do we store the exception data, right? So the exception data is stored into the Informatica's cloud data store and it is stored in the strong encrypted format. So we do store the data in the database within the IDMC POD infrastructure, which is basically in the private subnet, which does not have any public internet access. Uh, I think we have a couple more questions. Can we share exception exceptions with the data steward within the tool itself? Like, you know, <clears throat> the human task which are there the or from IDQ side. So currently uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, I think it's all about all the fraud management is to take like you know, go through the same what we have in the on-prem IDQ side, like, you know, uh, go with the remote task route or not. So uh, probably we'll keep you posted on that. Okay. So currently we don't have any options to share, uh, you know, to share these exception records with the data stables within the tools. That's, that's just an Excel file that you will get it actually so that you can download and then share it with the uh, users who are requesting it actually. Okay. And a uh, couple of questions. When is that human talk feature is going to be available uh, in cloud DQ again? Yeah, this would be on a, uh, you know, probably this could, this could be on a roadmap or like, you know, the product management team probably will update. Okay, so we will, we will let you know. So once we have everything uh, uh, in our roadmap actually, okay. Yes, Sachin and Kusuma here. I come yeah. Kusuma here from the product management. Uh, this is on the roadmap. Uh, we will uh, work it towards the end of the year, but you know uh, uh, we'll get back to you in the exact timeline. 
One of the things we would like to highlight is that uh, compared to the on-prem feature, the cloud is being implemented differently. So uh, we have uh, gathered lots of feedback from the on-prem customers. And then they said like um, the workflow and the human tasks caused lots of issues. You know, someone having a task not completing that and end up uh, the workflow running for a long time and then taking the system resources, memory and everything. Right? So what we uh, uh, what we had was on the uh, on-prem was like uh, the push method, whereas in the cloud, we are offering a pull method, meaning that uh, like the way we've seen in the demo, where um, you run your exception process and then download the data. And also the next steps would be like, um, once we run the um, exception task, what we would like to do is um, provide links, either the integration with the service now or even with the Informatica uh, task inbox where the user could come and see whether the exception job has been done and uh, how many tasks have been assigned to specific user, a specific group. And then from there, they can click and see what data is, how many data exceptions are there. And then they can view the data and then take the correction activities and then um, write it to some temporary uh, target or desired target. And then you can take it from there. I think um, uh, we are working on that. Uh, it's a roadmap item in terms of the same task and then um, the editing capability. Great. Uh, thanks, Krishma. Yeah. So we have one more question related to that itself. Like, you know, will there be an option in the future to stay the uh, to store the exception, uh, you know, data locally? Actually, so do we have yeah. any plans? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I think that came from Prashant, I guess, from uh, Gil Mortgage, right? Yeah, Prashant, yeah. Uh, we have that on the roadmap. Uh, you know, we are taking a, a phased approach where we want to do the the cloud first approach. That's where most of the customers going. But uh, we also thought about that some customers want uh, the data to be staying in their cloud or in their premises. So we have that roadmap. In future, we will deliver that. It's something like a, a secure than what you have today, and then it might have a connectivity to your uh, data store. Uh, it may be that like, you know, we will define what databases we support, and based on that, you'll have a connector or a, a, a database hosted in the agent itself, and then you can write the data to. Okay. And in the <clears throat> similar fashion of human task related question, actually, so I think Nilesh uh, is looking for the analyst two tasks are easy to manage. If they say like you know, if the hundred uh, tasks are there, if I finish ten today, the remaining probably next we can go. It, uh, we can take it up next day, kind of thing. So, is the same feature is available? Uh, kind of tracking all those things in our platform. That is what they are looking for. Prisma. So does exception management require a separate license? Uh, uh, I mean, it's just a request uh, in our IDC, IDMC platform itself, okay? So by default, uh, the license will not be available. So, uh, you know, you guys need to uh, raise a request so that, uh, you know, exception management license bit will be added based on the request actually, okay? For Nilesh, yeah. So probably this is these things are also in the roadmap. So to add, uh, uh, you know, the analyst way of features, like you know, the number of tasks will get generated based on the the human task configuration point of view, right? So uh, uh, hopefully, once the human task is introduced in our cloud data uh, quality, so probably uh, uh, you may see the tasks also. But yeah, again, uh, these things are also in the uh, roadmap actually. Okay. Any other question, Mithai? Any 
Any other questions? I think there is one question. Can we set an email ID? I think uh, Akshita, so can you can you answer that? Yeah, Sachin. So the question is, can we set email ID and that user can get the link to download the exception record data? Um, so this is not possible as of today, but I think we do have this in the roadmap. Uh, Ranga, you can add uh, if you want to add anything over here. Uh, sorry, I'm just back again. I'm, I had some uh, audio issues. Uh, so what was the question? Okay. Yeah, so Ranga, there is a question. Uh, can we set email ID and then the user can get a link to download the exception record data? Right? But yeah, I, that's I that's believe as of today... Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's in the roadmap. Like, there's things like uh, sending an email notification and also providing a uh, service not ticket. Uh, that's on the roadmap. We don't have it as of today. What we could do on the exception task is that uh, we can uh, configure in the case if you go to the exception task and scheduling options, there's an option to uh, enter an email. Uh, you can um, give an email for uh, successful uh, job execution, failure job execution. Our warning job execution, right? So once the job completes, it sends an email notification, and the user can go uh, look at the job to download the data. That is there today. But in terms of um, uh, how the links to the actual download link, that is that will be coming in the future. So likewise, it's a uh, service now integration as well in the future. I guess that's coming from uh, Nilesh, right? Yeah. Nilesh, uh, I think as we briefly talked uh, in our previous call, these are all roadmap items. And also the um, integration with our uh, data preparation tool that allows the users to view and edit and also uh, save to a uh, sales direction, uh, sales store. That's on the roadmap. We will, uh, I think we will uh, provide you the exact handles later. Right. Thanks, Ranga. So, any any more questions? Okay, uh, I think there are no more questions, Ashita. All right, Sachin. Uh, thank you so much for presenting today's session and also Ranga for joining us as a panelist and answering the queries. Uh, we kindly request our audience to take up the survey and let us know your thoughts. Today's webinar will be available tomorrow on Success Portal under the Resources tab. Thank you all for attending. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Ranga. Thanks, everyone.